So to make those, I'm starting with a cheese knife kit that I ordered. There will be a link in the description for that, as well as some offcuts of curly maple, purple heart, and walnut. It's not a crazy design. All I need to do is go to the joiner, get one good clean edge, and then I can rip all my pieces out on the table saw, glue it together. I'm going to take an offcut from this curly maple along with some of the purple heart to make the blank for the cheese knife. Year-old 12 inch awesome jointer. I know. And I'll leave a card up to the story about the jointer if you're curious. Well, there's lots of other ways to get a straight edge. Before I had that jointer, if you watch my old videos, you'll see one trick I used to like to use is take a level and you can just tape it to your wood and then you can use your level against your fence as a reference and get a perfectly straight edge. You can also do a search and find all different types of jointer sleds that you can make for a table saw. You can go hand school, just use a <laughs> old school and just use a hand plane. After jointing, I ripped the pieces to width of the table saw with a ripping blade. For my design, I ripped my maple board in half. The purple heart at around 5 eighths of an inch and two sets of thin walnut strips. Pretty close inside, but one's around 3 16 and the other one's just over an eighth of an inch. I didn't plane these down to thickness now because I'm going to plane everything after they glue up anyway. With everything ripped, I finalized my design by playing around with different arrangements until I found the one that I liked the most. Then I glued everything together with plenty of glue and clamping pressure. This time I thought ahead and actually remembered to orient the grain in the same direction on each board to minimize tear out later. So we're dry and out of clamps. I'm about to take this to the joiner and I was smarter this time. I learned my lesson and I made sure that all the grain was flowing the same way. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll leave a card to my clipboard video where I explain all that. But basically that's going to minimize how much chip out I get on the jointer and when I go to the planer. Now I want to run this side that was down on the clamps on the jointer instead of this side because I have this proud bit here. So if I tried to run this on the jointer and it wobbles, that could get really dangerous. But this side is a lot flatter, so I'll get this one perfectly flat on the jointer, and then I can take small passes on the planer to remove this until we get down to a nice, smooth, even thickness. I left everything long to minimize getting snipe on the jointer or planer, so now I just trim everything to length. I don't have a particular length in mind for this piece, so I just cut off as much as is necessary to get a flat edge and leave the piece as long as possible. Now it's time for finishing touches on this. I chamfer all the edges with my block plane and then sand up to 150 grit. After that I spritz the wood with water in order to raise the grain and sand up 220 grit before finishing with mineral oil. I like finishing with mineral oil because it's really easy to apply and it's food safe. You just rub on a whole bunch, let it sit for a few hours or even overnight, and then come back and rub off the excess. And the cool thing is whenever the board gets kind of dull, you can just rub on a new coat and it comes right back to life. With the board complete, I moved on to the matching cheese knife. I used some off cuts and lay out a pattern that's similar to the board pattern so they kind of match. I glue these together with regular wood glue, and it's really not too important that everything be square or aligned because I'm just going to turn this around anyway. I've got my knife blank in this little clamp so I can drill a hole in it. I have to drill the hole so I can put this tube in it. The way this works is once I put this tube in it, I can turn it to the shape. Then I have these two itty bitty pieces that I can glue into that tube, and one of them is threaded so I can screw this onto the end of it. If that doesn't make sense, you'll see pretty soon. After the glue dried, I drill a hole at the drill press for the kit tube to go in. I just used some CA glue to hold this in place. I should have scuffed the tube first with some sandpaper to get better adhesion, but I forgot, but everything seems to be okay. Now it's lathe work. I mount the blank on the pin mandrel and start with a roughing gouge to turn the square to a circle. 
Once it's round, I can switch to a spindle gouge to get pretty close to the profile I want and the ends close to matching the size of the hardware. Now, I'm really not very good on the lathe yet, so anytime I'm looking for some high accuracy, I use the lathe tools to get pretty close, and then I like to sand the piece to the exact size I want so I can just sneak up on that fit. Once the handles are the right size, I sand up to 600 grit before switching to abrasive pads. I really like the buffed finish you can get from these. And then I finish the handle using a friction polish. I put a heavy coat on first and then remove the excess before it has time to totally dry. I apply the rest of the coats really thin using a good bit of pressure to build up heat so that way the shellac and the finish cures between each layer. I do about 12 to 15 thin coats to build up a good thick film. The hardware for the knife fit really tight in the tube, so I didn't bother with any glue. It was actually tight enough I couldn't put them together by hand, or would have used glue, so I ended up using a clamp to just squeeze them together and then screw on the blade. 